is Jacob Long and I am 10 years old. My name is Gia Wimstone and I am also 10 years old. My name is Jackson Mitchell and I am 11 years old. And, and we, we are, are the, the Crowd Busters. I started doing robotics and coding because I play with the Legos and materials that we actually use for it. And I just love building stuff. How about you, Gio? I started because I didn't know what activity I was going to do this year. And when the opportunity for robotics opened up, I decided to join. And you, Jackson? Um, I joined robotics because I thought it was going to be a fun thing to do and a great opportunity to do something big. Okay. Jacob, can you tell me like a really fun or funny moment that happened while you were working on your robot for the Olympia? A funny moment that we had when working on our robot was that once we put it on the, the, the ship that we have, but then it kept falling off when we discovered that there's no magnets on it. How about you, Gio? Do you have a fun or funny moment that's different from Jacob's? Another funny moment that I remember is when we again we put our robot on the ship, the eyes on our bot would start looking sad or angry. And <laughs> you, Jackson? Um, well, we had many funny moments, so like it's kind of hard to pick a bunch. But a lot of the funny moments just happened when we were talking about the robot, you know, fixing and doing a bunch of stuff. Sometimes we would recommend some ideas and we'd all laugh about it, you know? <laughs> Alright, Jackson, can you tell me a bit more about the robot? Um, so the robot is meant to scrub crud, which is a buildup of like algae and sea life on the bottom of the ship. It's supposed to scrub it off. And we do that because Crud can slow down ships, causing them to use more gas, which doesn't contribute well to the atmosphere, so it increases the amount of greenhouse gases that go up when more fossil fuels are being burnt. So if the ship moves faster, that means less fuel will be consumed to get to where it wants to go. Okay. Uh, Jill, what would you say was the most challenging part about preparing for this big competition? I would say the most challenging part about preparing was like when we were first starting we were looking at different designs for the robot to go on and every single time we tried and we thought oh this idea could help and we could finally have the bot to stick onto the boat it which would just fall off and I think we used tracks one time but we realized it wouldn't work. Jacob, was there ever a moment where you guys felt like you wanted to give up? There was a lot of moments. <laughs> How did you guys overcome that? We overcome by just staying committed and winning. Jacob, what do you like the most about working with your teammates? The thing I like the most about working with my teammates is when we're working on the robot, we can always just stay calm and talk to each other if we feel stressed. Starting with Jackson, anything that you would have learned from each other, skills or talent, so to say, that kind of helped you guys to come together as a team? Well, I actually learned a lot from these two. Like, they're super good at coding, and so am I. But they taught me so many more things. Like, Jacob, he taught me how to build so much better than I could before. And Gia, she codes so well. Like, I just, they taught me so much about coding that I never knew before. How about you, Gio? I learned a lot that and it was really important because I finally got to understand how to build from Jacob and I'm moving towards being a, being a better builder and coder too. And you Jacob? I learned a talent from Gia and Jackson about coding. As I mentioned before, I am not a coding person, I'm more of a building person. But from these two, I learned a lot more about coding, and I like it more than building. How is it that you guys actually learn more about coding? Do you watch videos? Um, do you guys practice? What is it that you guys do? Starting with you. So, to learn coding, we would look at all of the ways we can code, learn what all the different things do, and we would take little quizzes so we so we can know 
Okay, if we need to do this, what do we code to get this? Okay, coach, can you talk us through what the preparations are like for both you and the students? Um, what it is that you guys were preparing for the Olympiad? Okay, so preparing for the Olympiad, we have Wednesday sessions each week, but specifically for the team, we also met on Sundays. And that would pretty much start from as early as 8, 8 a.m., 10 a.m. sometimes. And closer to the competition, we would have longer sessions, ending maybe at 7 p.m., 8 p.m. sometimes, depending on how much work we had to put in. Um, what were the sessions like? What did they typically do? So, sessions started out with brainstorming. We initially had to choose an idea that would work best for the team. Uh, we had to narrow down these ideas until we arrived at a robot that was able to automatically scrub crud from the bottom of ships. And then we went into assembling the robot, choosing the right magnets or the right ratio of magnets to choose that it would stick onto the bottom of the ships. Then we went into actually putting the whole project together. Then we moved into coding, which is mobility, moving the robot around so it's able to complete the task that is assigned to it. And then we, lastly, we went into just pre presentation in terms of how they would bring across the idea, how they would explain what the problem is and how the robot solves the problem. And then we would pretty much break the presentation into pieces so that each person would feel comfortable speaking about this idea. Tell us a bit more about the robot that you guys are developing. Okay, so the theme of robotics for us is trying to take manual tasks and make them automated. And for the robot that we have here is we're using a task that Jacob initially had to do as a chore and we, we automated it. So instead of cleaning the bottom of his dad's boat, uh, we created a robot that is able to do that task for him automatically. Hi, I'm Kana Kaur, I'm the manager of the robotics team here at Reach Academy. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit of how we came up with the team, the Crowdbusters. So um, Jacob had gone to a previous WRO competition and he saw the Future Innovator section and he really wanted to build it. And um, you know, we wanted to encourage that for him because the other um, competition we had been to before did not involve building. So we put together two teams of innovators who would build. We got six kids together who were interested, but Jacob Wang was really the um, leader of us being in the innovators section. This team seemed to have a lot of ideas, like how it is that you guys actually settled on this particular one. This year's competition is Earth Allies, so we try to keep a, the idea under a particular theme. And I think we chose an idea that showcased the strength of each person that's on the team. So um, it had a building component, which is Jacob is great at, and a, an additional coding component that Jackson and Gia would actually shine in. So that's how we came to um, an idea that would work best. So after choosing the idea for the scrub, but we wanted something to automate a manual task, we also we did the research. So I want to say a big thank you to the German Ship Repair Jamaica because they took us in, sat with us, gave us valuable insights in terms of how they currently clean ships and what they would want to see from our project. And we took those ideas and we figured out a way to work them into our solution as well. Uh, we also went on a phase where we wanted to see how we could use the crud that we would clean from the bottom of ships to see how we can use it to maybe uh, offset the cost in terms of coal or another energy alternative. So we went into various directions, but we narrowed it all down and we figured out a way to present the idea of best with an automated scrubbot. This is the first win for the school in any competition? Yes, this is the first international win for the school in the robotics competition. We have won the national competition before, um, last year in 2023, and we went to Panama, and it was a learning experience for us. This year, we were lucky enough to come home with first place. Can you tell us a bit more about your experience in robotics? Okay, so my experience in robotics, I started out with Reach Academy in 2018. Um, that was when we entered a local competition. I do have a computer science background, and I have a Python background as well, and I brought that level of, level of experience here. Um, again, COVID came, and we kind of took our foot off the gas just a little bit. 
uh, but we started back in 2022-2023, we focused on robo missions and we got the opportunity to travel to Panama. We saw robotics on a world scale, a larger scale and we you know, took some notes and we brought that back to Jamaica and then we entered a new category and we were successful by winning in Italy this year. And I think that's, that's what we are continuing that momentum to see how we can expose kids at an earlier age to robotics. So we have a process where we invite students to the robotics team at Reach Academy. You're, we send out an invitation based on what your parents think, you're able to come to the robotics team. And when you come, Coach Christian, he does both building and coding. And um, he basically helps the children to see their strengths. So once we identify if the strength is building or coding or both, because there are children who, could do, who can do both, that's how we decide who is on each team. It's also done by age. So we usually choose kids from grades four to six. This year we actually have some kids from grade three as well. But the team, the crud busters, are mainly from grade five and grade six. And the crud busters, the name was always crud busters? No, they came up, they, the kids came up with that. Because they're cleaning the hull of the, of the boat and it's yeah. crud they're taking off of it, they came up with the name, the crud busters. For each of the competitions, is that they can change the name? Do you guys just go as Reach Academy? We go as Reach Academy because we are enrolled under the school. Um, but the children put the name based on the invention. So next year, when we go back to the competition, they will choose what they want it to be called. I don't know what the competition is yet. So when we know what the competition is, like how Coach Richard said it was Earth Allies, once we figure out what the competition is, we'll know, you know what we're going to do and get started. If it is that you could build any kind of robots, no limitations at all, what would it be able to do, Jackson? You start. Um, if I could build any robot with no limits at all, mm -hmm. I would build a robot to try help um the to to try reduce the amount of greenhouse gases that are emitted and put into the atmosphere because that contributes badly to a lot of things. For one, the atmosphere. And then global warming, if this keeps up, like, it's gonna get so hot and we're gonna have to, like, we're gonna have to find a way to um, adapt to the heat if it stays like that. So if, if there was no limits and I would want to build a robot, I would build a robot to, um, to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases that are emitted into the atmosphere. What about you, Joe? Any robot at all, no limits, what would you build? I think I would build a robot, I think I would build a robot that is almost like a small motorcycle that you can drive. Why? I really like just going around and, and feeling the wind. I really like just driving around sometimes. <laughs> That's so cool. What about you, Jacob? I would build a robot to do my homework and <laughs> to do your homework yes. that's a fair answer <laughs> what's next for the team what's next for the team uh i'm toying with the idea of um ai i'm toying with the idea of uh, smarter robots for this year into next year so we want to do a little bit more automation in terms of using more sensors to make decisions for the robots to make decisions and so i think that's what we've been we're actually looking at and into next year, we're going to see how we can incorporate that into our robots next year. Is there another competition that it is that you guys have your eyes on right now? Definitely. So each year, we are trying to, for me personally, we're trying to establish a legacy here. And we've been successful two years now in a row. So for 2025, we'll be entering the WRO once more. But we're also looking to partner with other schools to see how we can have inter-school relationships within robotics and to see where that takes us. All right, so now it is that you guys have had this amazing experience and you guys are part of the team. Uh, do you have any new ideas for what it is that you perhaps want to be in the future? Jackson? Um, well, I really don't know what I would want to be in the future, but now that I know I have as like being a, like an engineer for robots, that's one of the things that I can do now. I know that I have that ability, so that's just another option for me to pick. Yeah. How about you, Joe? I think I I think I would be a scientist, but more on the mechanical side. Mm -hmm. And you, Jacob? I think I would consider doing engineering, 
because this is motivating me a lot.